The poor Chemahal was in India, comprises the inter-Himalayan valleys of the snow range bordering on Tibet, Bians, Trudans, and Dharma in the east, Juhar in the middle, and Penghanga on the west. Hotches lies in the Bias region in far west Nepal. Hotche Mahal High altitude cold deserts of Central Asia and hot tropical plains of South Asia are separated by the highest mountain system of the planet the Himalayas. The Himalayas path through the territories of Bhutan, the far north of Bangladesh, Nepal, the Tibet Autonomous Region of China, Pakistan, as well as through the Indian states of Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, the northern part of West Bengal and Arunachal Pradesh. But there is another territory in the region that has lost its historical place on the map but nevertheless hasn't ceased to exist at all. I am talking about the lands that unite the border areas of Western Tibet, the northeastern Uttarakhand, and the far west of Nepal into a single ethnic, linguistic and cultural space. Such link in the autochthonous tribes of Bhautia and Raza Shoka. <laughs> Film is dedicated to this unique Himalayan ethnic group, as this land whose name can only be seen on old English maps. Welcome to Khoja Mahal, or land of hot. Let's look at the land of hot from a geographical and ethnographical point of view. The basis for my map scheme was an English one dated 1906, on which the hot region was mapped. I took it from the book Western Tibet and the British Borderland. In order for the map to be used for its intended purpose, it has to be drawn and edited, making some edits to better visualize the material. Pohoche is a generic name of the numerous ethnic groups of Tibetan origin and the Tibetan Burmese language group living in the southern slopes of the Himalayas. Without touching on the whole huge topic, we will focus only on those Pohoche who live in the land of Hot, namely in the trans Himalayan valleys of Indian Uttarakhand in the far west of Nepal. The Pohoche of the Garval part of the Pohotland live in the Chamula district and are called Rong. The Pohoche of Kumon and western Nepal live in the districts of Pitogar and Dracula, respectively, and are called Shoka. There is much less similarity between the Pohoche of Garwal and Kumon than there is between the Pohoche of Kumon and the far west of Nepal. Garwal Rongpo and Kumon Shoka speak different dialects, while in the language of Kumon and Nepali Shoka. The only difference is in pronunciation. The language of Shok is colloquial and has no written language of its own. <laughs> I'm a researcher speaking of the land of Pot, cut off the garbal and trunk from Pot, singling out only the Kumaon district of Pitogar in Buffalo Scott and the area of the far west of Nepal called Kharchula. And also in my film, I will also talk mainly about Pitogar and Kharchu, but for the full disclosure of the topic, it's necessary to mention another district of Kumaon, Bagishpur. It's sandwiched between the trans Himalayan valleys of the Garwal Rongpo 
administrative district Chamon in Komonsky Shok, County Pitugar. It has three chamber high altitude valleys formed by the Pindari River and its tributaries. I made a super red film about the Pindari Valleys. It's called Pindari Land Davy. You can find it on YouTube. So it happens that here. In the very center of the land of Hot, there are no Hot settlements, neither Romko nor Shoka. Why? We will talk about this later, when we discuss the way of life of these peoples and the principles of their settlement. And the words trans Himalayan values will be key words in this discussion. In the meantime, let's go back to my beloved Shoka. Shoka life exclusively in the region on the Sarna Mahakali River, on both its banks or on the banks of its tributaries. According to the Boundary Treaty signed in 1816 by the British East India Company and the Kingdom of Nepal, Sarna Mahakali is the water border between India and Nepal. In its middle and lower reaches, it's called Sarna or Sarna Mahakali. Above Draktsula, the river is called Mahakal. In the upper reaches, approaching the Trans Himalayan passes to Lipile, Tinkar, and Limpia Tura, the river changed its name to Kali. According to the era of their settlement in the Sarda Mahakala basin, the Shokas are divided into two subgroups Johari Shoka, Rang Shoka. Johar Shoko means of Shoko living in the valley of Johar. Johar Valley is in the northwestern part of the Indian county, Pitogar. It is formed by the Goraganga River. In the upper reaches of the Goraganga, the Johar Valley is called Mal Johar, which means Upper Johar. Mal Johar is inhabited exclusively by Shoko people. Ancient ethnic Shoka villages scattered as if with handfuls on both sides of the river Gorganga. Stone buildings merge with the surrounding landscape devoid of last vegetation into a single picturesque canvas. Ascetic Malajohar is much more likely the village of Tibet or Ladakh than Uttarakhand. Gorganga means white river. The water of Goraganga are muddy and why due to the high child content. This is especially evident in the places where tributaries flow into the Goraganga. Look how transparent stream flowing from the magnificent Nandadevi crashed into a white water Goraganga. Nandadevi is a gem of a hike about the Johar valleys, the sports name of the which is tracked to William Glacier. From the village, located below the Million Glacier, a long transition to Tibet starts through the Intratura Pass. Goraganga appears from under the Million Glacier. 30 km glacier drains from Tirsuli, 7000 meters high. Tirsuli locks up the Johar Valleys. The gateway to the Johar Valley is the picturesque high mountain town Munsiari. Munsiari has a very nice ethnographic museum dedicated to this Shoka Ethnos Trivial Heritage Museum. The museum displays a variety of exhibits, minerals, jewelry, vegetation, and of the region's plants. Old photos, clothing, coins, all exciting literature on the subject and even photos of traditional dishes. Mm -hmm. 
the map of the hotland, hence in the most promenaded place in the museum. The founder, owner and curator of the museum, Mr. Shar Singh Pandey, conceived the museum and built it with his own money. He dedicated his entire life to preserving the culture of his homeland. Some of the museum's exhibits are considered unique. The Guruganga flows into the Mahakali 30 km below Jahartula in a very interesting place called Jaldib. Jaldib is located on both banks of the Sarna Mahakali, which means that one half of Jaldib is Indian and the other half is Nepalese. The Indian and Nepalese Jaldib are connected by a bridge and there are border posts on both sides of the bridge. For a person with Nepalese or Indian citizenship, allowed passage to the other side. Territories of Frank Soka begin above Joe Dibi. If the Johari life exclusively in India, the Frank Soka group is located on the territory of two states, India and Nepal. Rang Shoka is a wide group than Juhari, but closely related to them and talking some language as Juhari. The Rang Shoka group consists of three communities. Myansi Shoka, that is Shoka who live in the biggest region in the upper Mahakali and on the banks of Kali. Darmani Shoka, that is Shoka living in the Indian Darmani Valley. Chegudansi Shoka, that is Shoka living in the 14 villages of the middle reaches Sardi Mahakali. Chaudu means 14. Some researchers also identify the community of Api Shoka, that is Shoka living in the lower villages of the Api, Napa Surf, Dumlin, Rapla, and Situala. The Sashari is a gateway to the land of Juhari Shoka, so Juhari is a gateway to the land of Rang Shoka. Wearing in the wind colored little flags with Tibetan priors are called Hachu. This little fax, Darchu, gives a name to Darchula. This Buddhist tradition of designating flying prayers of prayers of the wind, significant crossing and passage has taken root in the land of Hot. By Himalayan standards, Darchula is a fairly large settlement. It's located like Jol Gibi on both sides of the Sardar Mahakali River and as a result simultaneously in two states, in India and Nepal. Indian Dharjula included in the region Petrograd. Nepal's Dharjula is the capital of the district of the same name in the far west of Nepal. In the same way as in Jol Gibi, Indian and Nepalese half of Dharjula linked by a bridge on either side which are border posts. Crossing Mahakali on this bridge is only possible for citizens of India and Nepal. Roads to the land of Dharmashoka in Bianzi Shoka starts from Dharjula. Dharmani Shoka means Shoka who live in the Dharma Valley. The Indian Dharma Valley is formed by the Hauli Ganga River, which is denoted as Dharma Ganga on some maps. The Hauli Ganga River flows into the Mahakali 20 km above Dharchula in the Tavakhat district. If we talk about the landscape, the Blooming Valley Dharma isn't like the neighboring desert valleys of Johar. However, this valley is populated by Dharmani Shoka related to Johar. The 
there is little or no difference in the religious homes or lifestyle of the people who inhabit such seemingly dissimilar valleys. The same scattering of stone houses on the slopes of mountains and in mountain depression, the same houses in the ruin and decoration, the same people and the same language. Even their little dogs are similar, charming hot kuta, hot dogs, white and fluffy. They play the role of a small cat type pet and live in homes in a privileged position, being in the dog table of friends much harder than herding black labradors. And today is the treasure of the Johar Valley. So the beautiful five domed Pontichilli mountain is the decoration of the Dharma Valley. The Dharma Valley ends with the path of the same name leading to Tibet. I made a film about the Dharma Valley called Legend of the Indian Himalayas. You may be curious if the film, from my point of view, was successful. Between the Johar Valley and the Dharma Valley, there is also a small rail valley formed by the river of the same name, which is tributary of the Goraganga. This Champa Valley is separated from the Juhar Valley by the very easy bridge Ganga Pass and from the Dharma Valley by the complex Harlan Pass, which takes about 3 days to go. There are two lost mono-ethnic villages of Shoka, the Rilam Valley. Various researchers disagree about Rilam Shoka. Some say that the valley of Rilam is inhabited by Dharmani, which means the Rang Shoka, while others say the Rilam is inhabited by Johari. Bianzi Shoka means the Shoka living in the Bies region. It's located in the upper reaches of the Mahakali and at its source and unites the inhabitants of eight Indian and two Nepalese villages into the ethnic community. In addition to the fact that this is located simultaneously in two containers in India and Nepal, it's also interesting from the point of view of convent communication with Tibet. On the territory of Bies, there are three passes leading to Tibet Pyathura, Lipule, and Tirkala. Especially important are Lipule and Tirkala, which, in agreement with the Chinese government, are open pilgrims and trade caravans. Pilgrimage roads, Gailash and Manusuvar, starts from Dhadjula. Pilgrims enter Tibet through the Indian Lipule Pass or Nepalese Tinkerula Pass. Even more important, there is a trade exchange with the Chinese Taklakot through these same passes. Taklakot is the largest Tibeta trans Himalayan shopping center, formerly known as Urang, in some sources, Urang. Taklakot has historically linked Tibet with India and Nepalese territories. Trade caravans that continuously flow along the Mahakali from Dharshula to Krakot and back determine the pulse of life of the entire region. Someone sells himself, someone drives other people's caravans, someone serves the caravan drivers on their long roads. To the Kimo convenient way for horses and moves, Caravans can steadily move from country to country. There are no special border posts as a cross thing. We will cross the mountain river on the state border. There is no objective lower border at the beginning of the BS territory. There is a bridge or the Tampakola on the Nepal side. The approaches to the bridge are adorned with bells prior to the flags and ribbons. Every shaka who goes up stops here to perform prior rituals, and going down, he says goodbye to Bias with the bell sound. Here and there, shaky bridges are thrown across the Mahakali, on which fearless shokas run back and forth. 
Nepal is dancing, run to the Indian store because India is better supplied. Or to get shook on a deep go to Hachula, the road along the Indian coasts is paved all the way to the border. Indian Bianchi run to the Nepalese side to collect Yersikumba in the Alpine windows of the Nepalese Apinam Preserve and have their own arts huts or equal terms with the Nepalese. On this occasion, the Bianchi themselves told me we have neither Indian nor Nepal here, we have beers here, and we lie but it's loads. And both India and Nepal treat this with respect. This because all Bianchi consider themselves to be the children of the same father, Vet Vyas. Bees is the origin of the Rishi Vet Vyas. According to the legend, before writing the Vedas, the Maharas meditated on one of the local shining Himalayan peaks. In Vyas, you can come across temples dedicated to the Vedas of Yasa. One of those temples is located in the Nepalese village of Changri. The first settlement of Bianchi Shoka is the village of Budi, which is located on the beautiful plateau of the Indian coast of Mahakali. In addition, Vedas is a territory of the Abhinampa Nature Reserve. The name of the reserve was given to the highest mountains of the far west of Nepal, Api and Nampa. Sometimes the region is called Api Nampa Saipal, including the name of the mountain territory of Mount Saipal located in western Nepal. The Himalayas, having fallen somewhat after Haulagiri, are again gaining altitude in western Nepal. The mountainous Himalayan chain of western Nepal and the Indian Uttarakhand is called Gurang Nimal. As I say, the Bianchi Shoka lies in eight Indian and two Nepalese villages. We can only see the villages of the Indian Shokas with binoculars, but the villages of the Nepalese Shokas are hospitably open to tourists. On the Nepalese side of Mahakali, there are two large ethnic shoka villages Changu and Chinkar. Both are only inhabited. The village of Changu is located as a fork of three gurgs Mahakali, Chinkar, and Nampa. There is a large village which has predominantly shook population, but there are also few Tibetan families. From Changru, you can go either to the Lepulepas or to the Chinkarlapas. Those roads will lead you to Tibet. Therefore, there is a temple dedicated to Gaelas Kangri Lapsin, where a pilgrims worship before continuing their roads. Kangri Lapsin means that you. Kailas, uh -huh. holy place, uh, the uh, lake, uh, no, mountain Kailas. How many people are in mountain Kailas? Ah, how many people are in Gangri? Gangri. Gangri. Lapsa. Lapsa means that uh, the Tibetan gods. Ah, uh ah. -huh. Yeah, come sir. Garam pani. Kalapana temple, like water. Located between the village of Inzan Shoka Karbiang and the village of Nepalese Shoka Chengru. Marks the end of the Mahakali River is the beginning of the Kali River. There not only the Kali River begins, but also the area of the disputed Indian Nepalese border territory with the same name, the Temple Kalapani. Water, resource and water from Kampa Kalapani. Hmm. This is Kova. Right side is Kova. Kova. Nepal is Kova. Kova. Kova is 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 Kova. India. India is Kova. Kova 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 the village Tinkar is located above Chengru and 15 kilometers from it. 
This is the last village on the busy caravan trade road where our caravaners rest before reaching the Tinkerla Pass. Now, it's probably the most magnificent and traditious village in the region and certainly the most beautiful. Tinkerla Pass is located 24 km from the village. Где-то она 4600. Я вам показываю одну из самых красивейших картин горных, которые я видел. Ну, было не очень легко сюда добраться. Нам еще часа три до перевала. Да, красота. Сели здесь пемой, чуть-чуть перекусили. Пема. Hello, hello. Said something. Oh, a little tired after the early morning walk to Tinkarla. I think we are more than halfway. So let's see when we get there. Is the low leg Bartunup? Yeah. He is coming. I'm coming. The first Russian here. He believed that he is the first Russian to reaching Lipu and uh, Tinkarla. So I wish, I would like to congratulate him. He's still like say, six, seven step away from the top. I'm sure he's gonna make it within a few seconds so we have done together all the technical passes together for 11 years so it was our probably the the most you know here is uh, Tibet Gurla Mandata highest mountain in, the, in Tibet From the pass, you can see the highest mountain in Tibet, Gurla Madhata. The uniqueness of Tinkerla lies in the fact that this point the borders of three states converge India, Nepal, and China. Crossing to the path through the Lipule and Tirkar passes, as well as trip to the Indian Adi Islands, are not available for foreigners. But the little visited valley is Tampakola. Abi, Nampo, Tinkara are open for us as well as virtually unexplored lands of Rapla in Setuala, inhabited by a hospital at Bishoka. Found the germs of Bishoka in all of our source. To the Apishoka community, the Shoko living near the highest mountain in western Nepal, Apihima, the authors of the term attributed the shock from the villages of Lumlin, Rapla, and Setuala. This term, Apishok, will be used by me. Villages Dumlin, Rapla, the Setuala topographically can be considered as middle, like the village of Bias is called the upper and Chao Dandi is called the lower village. Dumlin is a large rich village with a mixed population. It is located in the wide depression on the police side of Makathal on the main caravan road. After Dumlin, the landscape changed dramatically. The wide expanse of rainforest and mountain, parking zones give way to the narrow neck of a mountain church, 
proceed and add it to the zone of mixed forest and alpine meadows. Yudumlu is well known to me and other travelers because it's impossible to avoid it going towards the big mountains. Then we found ourselves in Rapla completely randomly. Rapla is much more interesting for ethnographers than Dublin standing on the main road. Знаки, они, конечно, это вот святое место, видимо, и посмотри, вот вот shape какой, да, вот у них вот саму вот, и вот это вот похоже на балбал. В Казахстане у нас есть балбалы, то есть каменные бабы, на которых из лицо и рука, как правило, с чашей. Тут много всяких расхождений, но сейчас не будем. То есть вот это как бы символ человека, а это может быть еще чего-то. Но вот ну реально вот это вот сделанные. И вот стрелки. Они все заросшие лишаем, то есть это очень старое все. И вот, вот какие-то вот знаки вот в виде точек. Rapla is hidden from prying eyes in a side road, the entrance to which isn't obvious. After a short descent in the beautiful valleys begins, and it seems that the gates of paradise are opening for you. My glass of free roses, so there is something to see there. These villages are very old, well received, fully populated, and there are no abandoned houses. If an old house is empty, then a new one is being built nearby. The first village of Rapla is called Bot Gaum. This is not a large village, but it's strategically the most important, both the school and the hospital are located here. The second village, Beach Gaon, is most populated. We spent the night here, and we were overwhelmed by the hospitality and kindliness of East inhabitants. Rapla. It's more ethnic, unlike the multinational Dublin. It's inhabited exclusively by one ethnic group, Soka. The saluted of Rapla contribute to a kind of ethnic conservation. Just imagine, we were the first foreign tourists in Rapla, and goes there completely unplanned. The use of Rapla built with Khadjila, so we walk there and only come to the village on vacation. For the older generation, it had to overcome this path and fruit, and to cross the Mahakali in this way. Also, and get into the gym on the Indian coast, you need to have a good health. Therefore, the Maldary people haven't left the village for more than 30 years, and I have never seen so many quite colorful characters anywhere else in Hot Mahal. Yeah.
Miss Pansy Unig and the house of the village's most respected resident. The hostess was preparing dinner, no bed for everyone, and would eat us at my request. Every now and then the light went out in the kitchen, which made ambience more mysterious and fascinating. <laughs> Cooking took the last two hours. Braise of his goes, naturally stove, as a separate fire pit were also used. Then someone brought hot milk. The window opened and solicitors a hand held out a tray with four glasses. It was very touching that about our request, Dutch, Dutch, please, expressed early in the day. It was not forgotten in the village. Then the house began preparation for the puja, which was held on the occasion of the full moon. He had to fly to beast the wicks for the oil lamps for the bandage. It was obvious that he did his often, so confident were his movements. <laughs> Then, his wife handed him blades of grass that look like onion arrows. <laughs> After reciting the mantras, the host placed a tray of oil lamps on the window. Everyone was given a preset in the form of rice grains, as well as one delicious candy and a grass of rice. Early in the morning, we went to the third village, far down. We walked past rich fields and well tended merchants, the vegetable gardens, marveling at the hard work of the locals who were already walking at town. One of the best places for me. Yeah, yeah, I like too. And I think this is really paradise and the yes. people not understand yeah. how they're happy, yeah? Paragon, the smallest village and the oldest. The path to Paragon doesn't end, but continues to go towards the Alpen Meadows, where locals go to collect their Sekumba, who are actively interested in the path, and there is one. Rob Plain Sitwala separated by the path of Sitwala. The path which Rapla starts from Jehachula, and the road to Sitwala starts from Gukulashtami. Once there was a three-day mountain crossing between the settlements, but this road is, isn't used now. According to local residents, Bridge across the rivers have been destroyed and haven't been restored, but you can only get from Rapla to Sitwala, or vice versa. It's possible only through Tharchula and Gukulishwar, but I know for sure that a very difficult mountain crossing from Rapla to Sitwala is possible, and I even know the person who did it. Go ahead, so please go right ahead. You can read about the details of our campaign on the site at the morning for the truth. The story is called the lost world of Rapla. So, let's draw a line under a geographical and ethnographical analysis of Kote Mahal. The land of Hot is inhabited mainly by Khotis. The Garval, part of Hot land, is inhabited by Rongpa Khotia. The Gumaon and Nepalese part of the Kote Mahal are inhabited by Shokas, who are united in several communities. Communities of Shoka are defined not by ethnographical criteria, but by geographical criteria, and we are talking about a single ethnic group spread across different valleys. The meaning of the division into communities is the right to use the land and natural resources of the region, for example, hip and pastures. And at the present time, the death ring of Yarsagumba, an outsider will not be allowed to enter the communal fields. Shoko living in the Johar Valley called Johara Shoko. Shoko living in the lower villages Hot Mahal called Chow Dansi Shoko. Shoko who live in the Indian Dharma Valley called Dharmani Shoko. 
The circus who lived in both banks of the Mahakali in its upper reaches was an Indian temple. I call it Piazza Shoka. Shoka people living in the Nepalese region of Rapla and Sitwala called Api Shoka. This is a great combat of the land of Hot.